Having shaken up the market with its very first Ionic, Hyundai does so again with this far more sophisticated Ionic 5. This time round, the Ionic is only an EV, and it's quite an arresting one, aimed at premium compact hatch and crossover models typified by cars like Volkswagen's ID4, Ford's Mustang Mach-E, the Polestar 2, and this Hyundai's close cousin, the Kia EV6. You have to offer something interesting and different in that kind of company. The Ionic 5 very definitely does. Exactly what has the EV automotive sector been lacking, apart from extended battery range? Well, here is our nomination, design character. Most family EVs are about as interesting to look at or to sit in as a wet day at Brighton Beach in lockdown. But this one, Hyundai's Ionic 5, isn't. The name might be familiar. Uh, the very first Ionic model launched back in 2016 was the first car to be available in hybrid, electric and plug-in forms, a Prius rival that went further. And this one, launched in early 2021, aims to go further still. It's a founding member of Hyundai's new Ionic EV sub-brand, a lineup that will subsequently be bolstered by the Ionic 6, a mid-sized saloon, and the Ionic 7, a large SUV. This Ionic 5 is less easy to pigeonhole, not least because of its arresting looks, penned by Luke Donkervolker, the man who styled most of the modern era Lamborghinis. Uh, larger than its predecessor, it's a family hatch with aggressive SUV overtones, and it makes a statement. In a way that close rivals being targeted here, comparably priced mid-sized EV crossovers like the Volkswagen ID4, the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mach-E, maybe don't. And that statement extends to the technology beneath this futuristic panelwork. This car's eGMP electrified platform, which is shared with its close cousin, the Kia EV6, accommodates a kind of uber sophisticated 800 volt electronic architecture for super rapid charging that we've only previously seen on mega expensive Porsche and Audi super sports car EVs. On top of that, there's an astonishingly spacious cabin which will definitely get your passengers talking. You really will feel like you're in some sort of motor show concept car. But Hyundai is building this model and it could be sitting, charging happily on your driveway if you are convinced by its charms. Will you be? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find that out. So, not an EV for the shy and retiring then, but will the driving experience be equally extrovert? This controversial cabin certainly seems to suggest that. So, get comfortable and with the graphic perambulations on the two screens in front of you out of the way, you're ready to press this black EV start-stop button in the middle of the dash. Now, the whole start procedure with its associated bings and bongs, feels more like the kind of thing that you'd activate with a domestic appliance, but the chimes get more urgent as you twist the thick lower right steering wheel gear shift stalk into D, ready for the urgent thrust of torque that usually propels EVs like this away from rest. Actually, this one is not as pointlessly frantic as some of its rivals, although to be fair, we haven't got the fastest 305 PS all-wheel drive version here with its front and rear axle motors and a claimed 0 to 62 miles an hour sprint time of 5.2 seconds. This mid-range test car uses the same 73 kilowatt hour battery as that flagship variant, but restricts itself to a rear driven motor with a 217 PS total output and a more real world sensible 7.4 second acceleration time on the way to an academic 115 miles an hour maximum speed figure that all Ionic 5 share. Uh, there's only one other variant in the range, also rear driven, but with a lesser 170 PS motor and a smaller 58 kilowatt hour battery. That model gets you to 62 in 8.5 seconds, but it's not really the best combination for propelling nearly two tons of Korean EV and delivering a decent range reading, and so it proves. 
Bigger EVs are supposed to offer bigger range readings, but the 58 kilowatt hour version of this car has a 238 mile return, which is little better than a little Renault Zoe Super Mini and 60 miles worse than Hyundai's much cheaper Kona electric EV in its volume 64 kilowatt hour form. The mid-range 78 kilowatt hour rear-driven Ionic 5 model we've chosen to test here does of course do better, uh, 298 miles uh, with the weightier 78 kilowatt hour all-wheel drive version managing 285 miles. So there you go, you needed all that info, now we can get on with what this car really feels like to drive. Well, heavy is the answer. Now, because we live in an era where batteries weigh down EVs like proverbial lead balloons, every car of this kind does. But heavy can sometimes be good, especially when, as here, all the weight is low down and centrally positioned. Now, in this case, on the Hyundai Motor Group's freshly introduced EGMP electrified platform. It certainly gives the car a planted feel through the turns uh, where there's reasonable traction and there's dogged grip. Uh, although the car does float a bit over bumps and at speed the nastier tarmac tears send tremors through the body shell. But this isn't supposed to be a hot hatch, well not in this form anyway. Uh, we expect Hyundai to develop an Ionic N flagship derivative, which is, and that will probably borrow the more highly tuned all-wheel drive powertrain and the 73 kilowatt hour battery pack combination, which in the GT version of this model's close cousin, the Kia EV6, uh, develops 585 PS. Here in this volume variant though, once you adopt a more relaxed gait, the car does of course feel more in its element and the slightly remote, although very accurate steering, no longer seems quite such an issue. It's certainly not nearly so affected by torque steer as the Kona Electric, and that's a car in which the steering wheel can tremble somewhat nervously under uh, really heavy acceleration. Uh, this Ionix brakes show a big improvement over that earlier EV2 with a positive pedal and a more, uh, well, seamless combination of regenerative braking and friction pad arrestment. Uh, you won't actually have to use those pads very much if you drive the car with its eye pedal feature activated, uh, the most extreme of the four regenerative settings that you select via these rather nasty feeling paddles behind the steering wheel. Not everyone likes one pedal driving in an EV and you certainly wouldn't want the eye pedal feature activated when you're cruising on the highway, but we found it works pretty well everywhere else. Uh, it boosts battery range in town while at speed on twisty roads. Uh, it replaces the normal dab on the middle pedal on the approach to faster bends. Of course, there are more conventional drive modes available too. Uh, the usual ones for tailoring steering feel and uh, throttle response. Plus, there's a winter mode too that's selectable from the EV menu on the central screen. Now, that softens the power delivery uh, to make driving in slippery conditions rather easier. In theory, there are three settings available to you from the uh, alpha style hanging steering wheel mounted mode button, uh, eco, normal and sport. Uh, but in practice, because eco makes the throttle too sleepy and sport makes it rather sharp, uh, you'll probably end up uh, leaving this car in its default normal setting nearly all the time. You would perhaps be more tempted to engage the other wheel selectable modes if the settings also dealt with ride quality. As mentioned earlier, uh, this isn't this Hyundai's strongest suit, but unfortunately no adaptive damping system has been developed for the mainstream versions of this car. Presumably, the engineers felt that it wasn't necessary, given the introduction here of the market's first integrated drive axle. Now, basically, what that means is that the drive shafts and the wheel bearings are combined, uh, supposedly to the benefit of ride comfort and handling stability. You'll be more inclined to feel the benefits of that particular piece of design out on the highway, where this Ionic softly sprung, comfort orientated damping does its best work. Uh, this would certainly be a relaxed conveyance for longer trips, although, as so often in EVs, all the uh, absence of engine noise does is to highlight the tyre roar and the suspension creak cruising soundtrack that you'd normally not hear. But it's still very pleasantly quiet and then there's the required level of semi-autonomous tech which uh, customers will be expecting for this kind of money. 
In this case, it's a navigation-based smart cruise control setup which uses a navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves or straights on the highways. And when it's activated, it can automatically adjust the car's speed for safer driving and to suit the posted limits. And in summary, well, engineers are still grappling with the challenge of making portly EVs of this sort ride and handle with the decorum that we've been used to from lighter combustion models, but a drive in this Ionic 5 suggests that they're slowly getting there. Funky without being clunky? Well, if that was the modest brief here, then it's certainly been achieved. Where do we even start here? The Ionic 5 looks like nothing else. Well, almost nothing else. Uh, designer, ex-Lamborghini stylist Luke Donkervolker says it's inspired by a 1970 Hyundai Pony, a model remembered as the brand's very first production car, but more representative, you'd think, of an aesthetic era the company might prefer to forget. But no, here it is, reinterpreted with avant-garde swagger for our new electric age, and a faithful translation of the eye-catching Concept 45 car that Hyundai revealed at the 2019 Frankfurt Motor Show. One thing's for certain, there'll be nothing like this on your street. Approach it and you realise the smoke and mirrors effect of all this dramatic detail, disguising a profile perspective that might look golf-sized in the pictures, but turns out to be closer to the size of something like a BMW X3 SUV in its 4.6 metre length, although with the curious quirk of a 3 metre wheelbase between the axles, which is larger than a hulking grade X5. Curious quirks, of course, as you can see, are very much a feature here. This diagonal Zorro-like slash that folds across the flank with origami-like precision, the forward-leaning C-pillar, uh, the flush door handles, this unusually inverted lined lower panel, and the weird rifling on the wheel arch cladding, which draws your eye to the non-negotiably large alloy rims with their unusual black parametric pixel design. These wheels, uh, 19, or in this case, 20 inches in size, are pushed right out to the corners of this mid-sized crossover utility vehicle. At the front, the theatre continues, this angry clamshell bonnet, Hyundai's first, with its oversized badge and flat profile, is set above these fabulous graph paper style 8-bit LED matrix headlights, detailed with 256 cubic pixels. As usual with an electric vehicle, a blanking plate takes the place of a grill, but unusually for an EV, uh, this narrow, shiny black one actually looks quite smart. While further down, uh, this silvered lower bumper section adopts this eye-catching V-shape with mean slatted corner cutouts in the fog lamp area recesses. Overtaking presence, oh yes. And folk you've passed will be squinting at the rear end of this car as it vanishes into the distance on a wave of electrified torque. Uh, this neat roof spoiler here is actually a wing with slots which enable air to flow through it. And the squarical rear lamp signature illuminates through these uh, narrow pixel-like LED clusters. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely the Hyundai Motor Group's first implementation of its completely new eGMP platform, uh, which was created to underpin the whole new generation of Hyundai, Kia and Genesis branded EVs, which will be filling our roads for the remainder of this decade. Right, enough with all that, time to take a seat inside. Now, as you approach, uh, the flush fitting door handles spring out and these intricately sculpted doors open wide to admit you to the kind of futuristic cabin that a car looking like this ought to have. Hyundai doesn't call this a cabin. What we have instead here is a living space. However you brand it, this is quite different from anything you'll have tried elsewhere. Light, airy, spacious, and like the exterior, rather self-consciously avant-garde. You won't like it at all if your preference is for traditional design, unless perhaps you remember original versions of the Mini and the Beetle, because there's a walk-through footwell here in the front, just like you used to get with those cars. And that allows the driver to uh, get out of the passenger side door if you happen to be parked in a position that allows you to open that more easily. Uh, why has it taken half a century for car designers to reinvent this 
feature. But we won't get hung up on that because there's plenty else to talk about. Uh, some of the features you might dimly remember having seen before. Uh, there's the same kind of weirdly shaped two-spoke wheel as you'll find on a Honda e, for example. And also a similar kind of widescreen twin monitor dash layout as is used by larger Mercedes models with a couple of joined together 12.3 inch displays. Uh, the driver's supervision instrument cluster screen in front of you is bereft of the usual covering binnacle hood. It is worth pointing out that some of the clever stuff that'll probably be on your dealer's demonstrator is limited to expensive top spec trim like this Universal Island sliding center console or on the option packs you can only have with top spec trim like these glorious relaxation premium front seats which extend right back and feature power tractable calf rests so you can comfortably nod off for 40 winks while you're powering up at your local charging station. So rather than enthusing too much about any of that, we should cover off the basics. Uh, the fact that you sit quite high and SUV-like, uh, the absence of door handles, you instead pull on this backlit rail. Gear selection is taken care of by this chunky and rather phallic looking lower right-hand wheel stalk. And of course, there are plenty of design flourishes, the narrow serrated black central vents, uh, the plus and minus pedal designations, the big round ambient lit speakers in the lower door panels, the huge glove box, which is actually a slide out tray, uh, the smart silver tread plates and the pixelated door card inlays. Don't be too misled by all this rather impractical light coloured seat trim either. You only get that as an option with top spec leather upholstery. Otherwise, the fabric shades are rather dark and dour, so it's fortunate it's possible to change the screen backlighting from black to this lighter layout to brighten things up a bit, although it is a bit too light unless you select the available blue light filter option. Virtually all the interior touch points, the seats, the headliner, the door trim, the floor and the armrest, they're fashioned from eco-friendly, sustainably sourced materials like uh, recycled plastic bottles or plant-based and natural wool-derived yarns, while the eco-processed leather and the bio-sourced paint both use plant-based extracts. Enough for the environmentalists, let's talk screens and let's start with this central one which uses a special Zhong E graphic user interface with various interior ambient settings. As usual with Hyundai Group models, it has two main home screen pages, one simple uncluttered one with a battery graphic, range, temperature, audio and navigation, or you can swipe across to a display full of little icons, all of which can be moved about to your preferences, much like your phone. Uh, you can also create a split screen format, say with EV and audio info. However you choose to view it, there's lots of really neat stuff here, as befits a sophisticated EV, the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone projection is of the wireless kind. The rear view camera is especially clever with side, back and zeroed in overhead views, plus a rather cool 360 degree sweep and the screen's built-in dynamic voice recognition system uh, not only deals with media and destination inputs, but it can also operate heat for the seats and the wheel, and even open the tailgate. Navigation routes are calculated using a powerful server located in a Blue Link cloud, which is continually updating itself with charging station locations. And on that subject, uh, there's a comprehensive EV section for your charging regime with a beautifully concise home screen which tells you at a glance pretty much everything that you really need to know. Climate controls thankfully have been separated out into this little silver keyed panel to the left of the starter button although there are also climate and heating and ventilation icons on the central screen which rather confusingly seem to do exactly the same thing. Uh, they both link you to Hyundai's usual and very useful auto dehumidify and auto defog functions plus a smart ventilation option too and the helpful ability to be able to alter rear cabin climate and back seat heating from here at the front. Other centre screen features include voice memo so you can dictate to the car as you drive, a quiet mode which restricts the volume of the stereo speakers and plays audio output only through the front ones so kids can get to sleep on longer trips 
and the Sounds of Nature section that'll pipe soothing natural sounds into the cabin as you drive, like snowy village, lively forest and calm ocean waves. All rather nice. Uh, we're not quite sure why you'd want the rather miserable soundtrack of either rainy day or open air cafe, while warm fireplace delivers the rather unnerving feeling that something up front has ignited. Anything you can't find on the central touchscreen satellite navigation and media centre and also a few things that you can is located on the complementing uh, driver's supervision instrument cluster to the right of it and that's viewed through this uh, flat bottomed two spoke vegan leather stitched wheel with its lower left side driving mode button. Now this isn't one of those screens that can be configured every which way, but if you're generous with ticking boxes on the spec sheet, uh, it does have a few uh, tricks up its sleeve, uh, notably the optional TechPak's blind view monitor, which gives you rear camera screens that flash up on either side of the instrument cluster when you activate the direction indicators. Uh, this displays standard functionality. It's all about a central section with uh, selectable drive assist, car, nav and info options and a line of little data entries along the bottom of the monitor positioned either side of a central miles per kilowatt hour meter so you can see electricity consumption in real time. Drive range and an odometer sits to the right of this with battery capacity, drive mode and your chosen regenerative braking setting to the left. What else? Uh, well, your all-round view is fine thanks to the glassy cabin and it's aided by parking sensors and that rear view camera. When you're manoeuvring into spaces in the rain or starting off in the morning after a stormy night though, you'll curse whoever in the design team thought a rear tailgate screen wiper to be unnecessary. Uh, let's finish up front here with a look at cabin storage. Now earlier we mentioned this Universal Island sliding centre console uh, which on this top variant slides back and forth over a range of 140 millimetres. We're not sure it adds a great deal to cabin practicality and this huge shallow lower tray leaves stuff in open view which would usually be secreted away within a conventional lidded box between the seats. Uh, the island's lidded armrest uh, covers a meanly proportioned compartment uh, which is without media ports. Those are a couple of USB-A slots uh, behind these open cup holders at the front. As for practical touches elsewhere, well, more USB-A sockets uh, together with a 12-volt socket and a space for a 15-watt wireless charging mat. They sit in this centrally placed open bin beneath the dash. We mentioned the big glove box. That makes up for the fact that the door pockets are rather small, although they do incorporate useful bottle holders. An overhead sunglasses compartment, that's been forgotten, but you do get the usual ticket clips in the sun visors. Okay, let's take a look in the rear. Uh, the door for which opens so wide that you might struggle to put it right back in a really confined space. And once in the back, well, if you thought the front of the cabin was spacious and airy, then uh, this is on a different level. It's truly comparable to a much larger car in the next segment up. And that's thanks to that three meter wheelbase that we mentioned at the beginning. Now, to give you some uh, perspective on that, that's 50 millimeters longer than something the size of a Porsche Panamera, and that's in a crossover with the vehicle length of a Porsche Macan. Now, such are the advantages of creating an EV model platform from scratch rather than botching it together from one designed instead for a combustion engine. Now, that's the sort of thing that you'll find in this segment with cars like the Mercedes EQA and the BMW iX3. The underpinnings are flat too, so no central tunnel to impede a centre-seated passenger. There really is room to stretch right out here. Even before you start sliding the bench, it moves over a range of 135 millimetres or exploring the way that you can recline the backrest right the way rearwards. Even with a six-footer up front, it'll still feel limo-like. And there's plenty of headroom too. Not everything's ideal, of course. Uh, there are no individual reading lights. The plastic silver door pulls feel cheap. And on models equipped with this sliding universal island, it's annoying that there's no catch 
that allows you to slide it from here at the back. Plus, thanks to the uh, tinted glazing, we could imagine that it might be rather dark back here uh, inside the mainstream models, which lack the option of this top variance lighter colored trim. That's something you'll have no option to alleviate with the panoramic vision glass roof, which has been designed for this car because uh, at the time of this test anyway, the UK importers aren't offering it. There are no door handles back here either, just the same backlit stitched rail, but there is convention elsewhere. There are cup holders in the central armrest, there are coat hooks in the grab handles, there are B-pillar vents, small door pockets with bottle holders, uh, netted seat back pockets, twin USB A ports above a central cubby here. Uh, here though is something that isn't conventional. There's this little lower 250 volt 16 amp three pin V2L or vehicle to load port. It's only usable when the ignition's on. And it's great not only for a laptop or a phone, but also something even bigger that you might be carrying, like say an electric scooter or a drone. It's an optional feature on mid-range models and it's standard with top spec. Now using this extra cost adapter, you can also activate a second V2L port here within the powered uh, driver's side charging flap where you'll find the usual uh, conventional socket here embellished with 10 illuminating pixel squares designating the battery charge status. The second V2L socket is arguably more useful because you can use it when the ignition's off. So for example, when you're camping, you can power a kettle or a microwave oven or a mini fridge or an air pump. Uh, you could even use it to power another EV if a friend or family member who has one should find themselves stranded chargeless by the side of the road. Although the V2L port output is limited to 3.6 kilowatts, so it will only trickle charge. Right, enough with that. Uh, let's finish with a look at the boot, which providing you avoid base trim will be electrically powered and you can operate it with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper uh, if you happen to be approaching the Ionic 5 all laden down with bags. Uh, the tailgate rises to reveal a predictably high load platform. Those huge battery packs just have to sit somewhere, but a pretty reasonable 527 litre cargo capacity. Uh, to give you a bit of segment perspective, that's similar to a Volkswagen ID4, but a massive 125 litres more than you'll get with a rival Ford Mustang Mach-E. There is an underfloor section too, although most of that is obstructed by a central hump and the rest of it is so shallow it would only really be of much use for a charging cable or for an item you've recently run over. Uh, Hyundai hasn't bothered to favour you with a bag hook or a 12 volt socket back here. Uh, there's only one rather dim load area light and disappointingly uh, you don't get either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split seat back either. So there's no option to slide longer items like skis in between a couple of rear seated folk. Uh, if you push forward the rear seat backs up to 1587 litres of total space can be revealed. Now not all EVs in this segment give you some extra storage space for the charging leads beneath the bonnet. Uh, the ID4 doesn't for example, but you do get that here. Uh, if you go for the top all-wheel drive model with its extra front mounted motor, this front space will inevitably suffer uh, to the point where you really won't be able to fit anything much more substantial than a slim laptop bag in here, but with more common rear driven variants like the one we have here, as you can see, it's really quite a usefully sized space. The Ionic range isn't too difficult to get to grips with. The lineup kicks off with an entry level SE Connect trimmed variant, which features the standard 58 kilowatt hour battery and a rear mounted 170 PS electric motor. Sadly, the importers couldn't keep the price of this base version of the car uh, beneath the government's current £35,000 plug-in car grant threshold. So even at this point in the range, you'll be on your own with the asking figure and that's pitched from launch at around £37,000. 
Most customers, though, will be limiting their choice to the mainstream models priced in the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket and choosing either mid range premium spec or this top ultimate level of trim. Uh, with both, you get three powertrain choices. Now, that same 58 kilowatt hour rear driven 170 PS setup features again, but you're more likely to want to find the extra around 2,600 pounds to get the longer range 73 kilowatt hour battery we're trying here. And that takes you to a price starting point of around 42,000 pounds, a sum which from launch would get you the 73 kilowatt hour battery mated to a 217 PS rear axle motor, the setup we've been trying here. That offers a 60 mile range increase to 298 miles. If you can push your spend to over 45,000 pounds, then your dealer will offer you the top 73 kilowatt hour all wheel drive variant with motors at the front and back, generating a really rather potent total output of 305 PS. Although that setup, uh, the extra weight there drops range a little to 285 miles. If that's not fast enough, then ask your dealer about the high performance Ionic N, rumored but not confirmed at the time of this test in autumn 2021, and which, if it's introduced, will probably use much the same 585 PS all wheel drive powertrain that you'll find in its direct cousin, the Kia EV6 GT. The Ionic 5 will eventually replace the company's older shaped Ionic models when they reach the end of their production cycle. But at the time of this test in autumn 2021, that older shaped Ionic was still on sale. The old Ionic Electric has rather a small 38.3 kilowatt hour battery and it only goes 182 miles between charges. But if that's enough, you might be interested to know that at the time of this test, with the benefit of the £1,500 government plug-in car grant, it cost just over £31,000. A better selling entry-level Hyundai EV is the brand's Kona Electric. That too qualifies for a government grant. Uh, that's providing you avoid uh, top spec trim though. And therefore, uh, in comparable 64 kilowatt hour form, cost at the time of this test from around 32,500 pounds, which means it would save you around 4,500 pounds over a base Ionic 5. The Kona Electric is a significantly smaller car though, but the 300 mile range that it can offer in 64 kilowatt hour form is way better than the 240 mile figure of the base 58 kilowatt Ionic 5. So food for thought. Make absolutely sure though at the outset that an EV really is what you need here. Uh, the same sort of money being asked for an entry level Ionic 5 will get you the plug-in hybrid version of Hyundai's similarly sized Tucson SUV and that's priced from around £39,000 which has a 38 mile all electric driving range or for not very much more than the cost of this bigger battery 73 kilowatt hour Ionic 5 uh, you could get yourself the brand's larger Santa Fe plug-in hybrid SUV and that goes up to 39 miles between charges. It has the advantage of seven seats and it costs from around 46,000 pounds. If an Ionic 5 still seems to be a better fit for you, then you'll probably be aware that this car has a growing band of similarly sized EV rivals and you'll want to consider what else is on offer in this segment before you finally decide. Now in our uh, design section, we briefed you on the fact that this car is a slightly larger thing than say a BMW i3, uh, a Volkswagen ID3, or a Kia e Niro. Uh, those EVs are rather more closely targeted by the Hyundai Kona electric model that we've just been talking about. Uh, you could get a little uh, nearer to what's on offer here if you go for a bigger battery version of the Nissan Leaf, uh, also the Skoda Enyaq IV. Now models like those, uh, they are costed primarily in the 35 to 40,000 pound bracket, but those EVs really aren't quite as uh, sophisticated, as spacious or as avant-garde as this Ionic 5. Closer to Ionic 5 territory and closer to the 40,000 pound price point, 
are slightly more sophisticated compact EV crossovers like Nissan's Ariya, uh, Volkswagen's ID4, and Cupra's Born, all three of which are priced from just under £40,000 with comparable battery packs to the one used by this Hyundai. For just over 40,000, uh, you could also get yourself the base standard range 75 kilowatt hour version of the Ford Mustang Mach E. But compared to those four contenders, this Ionic 5 offers a trendier look and feel, which will really matter to potential customers. A couple of Teslas offer perhaps a more premium match. Uh, pricing for this Ionic 5 in this rear-driven 73 kilowatt hour form, uh, that starting point of around 42,000 pounds we mentioned earlier. That's very similar to what the American brand will charge for the base standard range plus version of its popular Model 3. That's a saloon though. Uh, for a little less, but not much less, you can get the Tesla Model Y, which is a five-door hatch SUV and therefore rather more closely comparable to this Hyundai uh, for just over £45,000, which, as we said earlier, is a kind of sum that could get you this Ionic 5 73 kilowatt hour model in potent all-wheel drive form. Uh, you could probably get a long-range large battery Model Y and perhaps even equip it with the unique in-segment option of seven seats. In the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket where nearly all Ionic 5 cells will reside, uh, you could also consider the 77.6 kilowatt hour version of this Hyundai's identically engineered cousin, the Kia EV6. Or perhaps, alternatively, a uh, premium segment mid-sized EV contenders like the Mercedes EQA, the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron, uh, the Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric in all-wheel drive form, and our current favourite, the Polestar 2. The Lexus UX300e, that also sits in that price segment, but that's not so tempting because its 54.3 kilowatt hour battery will only take you up to 186 miles. A BMW i4 starts at just over 50,000, and if you can push your budget up to around 60,000, well, you could then consider the BMW iX3. That has an 80 kilowatt hour battery, but that car is really more directly comparable to uh, larger EVs like Jaguar's I-Pace, the Mercedes EQC, and Audi's e-tron Sportback, which sit in the 65 to 70,000 pound bracket. If, having considered all that, you conclude it is an Ionic 5 that you really want, then you're going to need to know, of course, just how generous Hyundai has been with standard kit. So let's take a look at that now. Now, even the base SE Connect 58 kilowatt hour variant comes pretty well kitted out with big 19 inch alloy wheels, LED multifaceted reflector headlamps with smart high beam, uh, power folding mirrors, rear tinted windows, uh, rear parking sensors, a Thatcham category one alarm, and a wide portfolio of camera safety kit that we'll brief you on in a few moments. Inside the two big 12.3 inch screens, the driver's supervision instrument cluster and the touchscreen satellite navigation and media center are standard fit. We'll brief you on media stuff in a second, uh, along with mood lighting, a rear view camera, dual zone air conditioning, a wireless charging pad and smart cruise control with stop and go. Uh, there's also driver's seat lumbar support, a uh, useful auto dehumidify and auto defog climate functions. Oh, and the sliding rear bench, that comes as standard too. A rear wipe has been forgotten, uh, and as with most EVs, you can't have any kind of spare wheel. We mentioned media stuff. Uh, across the range, there are all the usual features on the central screen, uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone projection, a decent four-speaker DAB tuner, Bluetooth and dynamic voice recognition system voice control, plus a voice memo feature so you can dictate to the car as you drive. Uh, a quiet mode that restricts the volume of the stereo speakers and plays audio output only through the front ones so the kids can get to sleep on longer journeys. And the sounds of nature section that will pipe soothing natural sounds into the cabin as you drive. You can choose from warm fireplace, snowy village, uh, lively forest, calm ocean waves, rainy day or open air cafe. More importantly, there's an extremely sophisticated navigation system which is updated with Hyundai's MapCare service and here can work with a clever cloud-based Blue Link connected routing feature. Uh, this sees 
driving routes calculated on a powerful server and that's located in a Blue Link cloud which allows for more accurate traffic forecasting, more precise times of arrival and more reliable route recalculation. Uh, this works with incorporated Hyundai live services which alert you to speed cameras and provide accurate information on traffic jams and roadworks. Uh, staying with Blue Link technology, the central screen has a Blue Link connectivity section which offers a calendar, weather reports and vehicle diagnostics menus. And of course there's an app, there's always an app isn't there, uh, which predictably in this case is called Hyundai Blue Link. Uh, now once this is downloaded onto your smartphone you can use it to manage your charging regime and to locate the nearest charging station. It'll also precondition the climate system so that the cabin will be pre-warmed or pre-cooled before you get into it. And there's a last mile navigation feature too and that'll take you on foot to your ultimate destination if you have to park your car a little way from it as in a busy city for example. Plus of course the app will do all the usual things that manufacturer model apps tend to do these days. You can send destinations from your PC to your car, you'll be able to remotely lock or unlock the doors and you'll be advised if the alarm goes off. Uh, using the app via your phone you can also access maintenance info on your Ionic 5. Uh, you can send places of interest data to the navigation system and you can use the find my car feature to find the vehicle in a crowded car park if you've gone and forgotten where you put it. Enough with media features onto the electrified stuff. Now unlike some other brands, Hyundai doesn't expect you to pay extra for a three pin connector charging cable. This is supplied along with the usual seven pin type two lead with storage space for both within the front compartment under the bonnet. Uh, there's a 10.5 kilowatt hour three phase onboard charger and the brand also includes a year's subscription to the Ionity high power network of European chargers. If you can find one of these, you'll get the benefit of the fact that an Ionic 5, thanks to an 800 volt electronic architecture shared only this segment by the Kia EV6, can take a charge of up to 350 kilowatts. Many rivals can only charge at up to 125 kilowatts. Most owners though, as we remarked earlier, will be stretching at least as far as mid-range premium trim. As I mentioned before, that's what you have to do to get the larger 73 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, Ionic 5s from this trim level upwards are recognizable by their smarter silver colored side moldings and their more piercing dual LED low and high projection headlamps which have special surrounds. You also get front parking sensors and some extra camera safety kit, more on that in a moment, and a powered tailgate and that can activate with a swipe of your foot below the bumper if you're approaching uh, the back of the car laden down with packages. Uh, rather cleverly it can also be activated using the infotainment system's dynamic voice recognition system. Inside with premium spec the car gains heated front seats with powered adjustment for the driver's chair, uh, pixel perfect grey cloth upholstery, a heated steering wheel and an electrochrome rear view mirror. If you're all in with the whole Ionic 5 concept and you want to stretch to the top ultimate trim level we have here, that's set apart with high glossy black door mirrors, uh, rear privacy glass and providing you choose the larger battery, these larger 20 inch wheels. Uh, inside ultimate trim is set apart by leather upholstery in either black shadow or this particular car's lighter moonlight grey and the clever Universal Island sliding centre console and an upgraded Bose audio system with seven speakers and a subwoofer. Uh, there's also a head-up display with augmented reality which essentially turns the windshield into a display screen uh, projecting not only speed and traffic sign information but also navigation and safety warnings. Ultimate trimmed models also get alloy pedals, deluxe door scuff plates, uh, cooled ventilation for the front seat, uh, powered adjustment for the front passenger seat, solar glass and laminated glazing for the windows and at this level in the range you'll get the V2L vehicle to load function giving you sockets both inside and outside the car which supply up to 3.6 kilowatts of power. 
so you can charge high power electrical equipment, maybe an electric bike or a laptop or a drone. Or perhaps you could power various devices, an air pump maybe, or if uh, say you were camping, perhaps a kettle, a microwave, a blender or a small fridge. The interior V2L socket is a three pin port. You'll need an accessory adapter for functionality with the outside charging port. Uh, the V2L package is optional with mid-range premium trim. Mentioning options reminds us to warn you that there aren't that many and most of the ones that you can have are only available if you've stretched up to this very priciest ultimate level of trim. If that is the case, then you're probably going to want to consider the Eco Pack uh, that we have here. This preserves driving range in the winter, courtesy of a battery heating system and a heat pump. Uh, if you want the very coolest features that are available with this Ionic 5, uh, then you'll need the optional Tech Pack. Again, it's been fitted here, and this gives you the brand's relaxation premium front seats with their extending calf rests, plus a blind view monitor, which gives you rear camera screens that flash up in the instrument cluster when you activate the indicators. Uh, the Tech Pack also includes a parking collision avoidance assistance system, which uh, automatically brakes the car if you're just about to reverse into something. Uh, memory settings for the front seats too, and a remote smart parking assist feature, which allows you to remotely park the car from the key fob while you're standing outside it. Yes, really. At the time of this test, Hyundai wasn't offering as an option the sophisticated solar cell roof that's been developed for this car. But if we were purchasing, we'd be asking our dealer about that because it's very clever. It has a charging capacity of 205 watts and it's able, well, perhaps in sunnier climes and hours, to add enough energy to the battery to provide for around 1,200 miles of extra driving range per year. You couldn't, at the time of this test, have the more conventional panoramic vision glass roof, which is available in other global regions either. All models can, though, be optionally equipped with a styling kit, which gives you door mirror caps, a brushed aluminium optic tailgate trim line, and a side trim line. The latter feature is available separately. Uh, you can also specify black or white decals for the C-pillar. Uh, practical extras include textile or all-weather floor mats, boot liners, both for the luggage compartment and for the front and a dog guard, uh, plus you can fit a tow bar. The car can tow up to 1.6 tonnes, and if you do, you'll be able to specify a bike carrier to sit on top of that. Bear in mind, uh, before you splash out too much on any of that stuff, that whatever Ionic 5 model you choose, uh, you will be expected to pay more for your chosen paint colour. Uh, even the only solid shade, Atlas White, rather appallingly, costs £300 more. Beyond that, there are two matte shades. Uh, we have one of those here, it's gravity gold. There are two metallic colors and there are four pearl ones. Onto safety, as you'd expect, there's a decent package of camera safety kits, starting with the usual autonomous braking system. Uh, Hyundai's is called Forward Collision Avoidance Assist, and it's a setup that detects pedestrians, cyclists, and other vehicles in close proximity. Uh, the brand has developed this further with a Forward Collision Avoidance Assist junction turning feature, which anticipates oncoming traffic that you might be just about to turn out in front of at junctions. Uh, you'll be warned if this is about to happen and if necessary, the car will be braked to avoid an impact. Uh, there is also an LKA, Lane Keep Assist feature, which applies subtle steering lock if you drift out of lane or you drift too close to the edge of the roadway. And a Lane Follow Assist setup that keeps you a safe distance behind the vehicle ahead, combining with a Highway Drive Assist feature to automatically adjust the car's speed to suit surrounding traffic. Uh, there's also leading vehicle departure alert so that in an urban queue, when the vehicle in front moves off, so will you. There's much more too. We mentioned earlier that the LED headlights come on with high beam assist so that they dip themselves at night. Uh, driver attention warning constantly monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. And if that's detected, uh, that will prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist will alert you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. If necessary, applying the brakes. 
Plus is also an intelligent speed limit assist feature, which uses a camera to read speed limit signs along the road and displays them on the navigation screen. And navigation-based smart cruise control, that uses a navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves or straights on highways. And when it's activated, it can automatically adjust the car's speed for safer driving and to suit posted limits. Hyundai has also specifically thought about the safety of rear seat passengers. A clever safety feature we really like is the rear occupancy alert feature, which monitors the rear seats using an ultrasonic sensor that helps to detect the movements of children. Uh, the system first reminds drivers to check the rear seats when they're exiting the vehicle with a message on the instrument cluster display. If the system detects movement in the rear seats uh, after the driver has left his or her Ionic 5, it'll honk the horn, it'll flash the lights, and it'll send a Blue Link alert to the driver's smartphone via the Blue Link connected car system. Uh, believe it or not, tragedies have occurred where children have accidentally locked themselves in the car or parents have locked children in hot vehicles. Uh, horrifically, in the US alone, more than 800 children have died from heat-related illnesses in vehicles since 1994. And in 55% of those cases, the parent was apparently unaware the child was even in the vehicle. On a really hot day, experts say it only takes a matter of minutes before the heat can overwhelm a child's ability to regulate his or her internal temperature. Their core temperature can increase three to five times faster than that of an adult. So that's all good. Uh, what else? Well, of course, all Ionic 5s come equipped with front and side airbags, as well as curtain airbags and a central bag in the dashboard. Uh, there's also auto door unlocking in the event of an impact, as well as ABS braking and electronic stability control to help you avoid one in the first place. An e-call system will alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location if the airbags do go off in an accident. And there's also a tyre pressure warning system. As I mentioned earlier, if you want a few extra camera safety features, the higher trim levels provide them. Avoid entry level trim and the forward collision avoidance assist system gains a crossing feature, which also detects uh, vehicles crossing in front of you, which might be a hazard. Uh, plus you also get blind spot collision avoidance assist, which stops you from pulling out dangerously in the face of oncoming traffic. If necessary, braking to avoid a collision. Uh, this functionality also upgrades the car's highway drive assist system to a level two status that promotes a limited level of highway-based autonomous driving capability and which can help you while changing lanes or during evasive driving. There's certainly plenty of cutting edge electrified technology on show here. Hyundai claims the 58 kilowatt hour and 73 kilowatt hour battery packs that are in use here are the most power dense it's ever offered. And this car together with its close cousin, the Kia EV6, showcases the first in segment introduction of an 800 volt electrified vehicle architecture, something previously only seen on uber expensive super sports EVs like the Porsche Taycan and Audi's e-tron GT. You shouldn't get your hopes up too much though, uh, for all the difference that this might make when it comes to the all important issue of driving range, uh, the 298 mile figure recorded by this mid-level uh, rear driven 73 kilowatt hour model, the battery capacity is actually 72.6 kilowatt hours to be exact, is certainly competitive but it still trails a little behind the range you get from a bigger battery version of a key rival like the Volkswagen ID4, uh, the Audi Q4 e-tron and our our current segment favorite, the Polestar 2. You'd be expecting us to mention Tesla here, uh, perhaps the brand's most popular Model 3 saloon, but the base standard range plus version of that car, which is priced most closely to an Ionic 5, delivers only 278 miles. So that leaves the volume variant of that Yankee contender a midway between what you'll get from the rear driven 73 kilowatt hour version of this Hyundai and the base 238 mile reading of the entry level 58 kilowatt hour rear driven Ionic 5. Uh, we gave you these uh, figures in our driving section along with the 285 mile figure uh, applicable to this Korean contender in its priciest 73 kilowatt hour all-wheel drive form. 
With this rear-driven 73 kilowatt hour model, we've been managing an average drive efficiency reading of 3.3 kilowatts per mile on this test. You can monitor this via little readouts at the bottom of the instrument binnacle screen and around 240 to 250 miles of range. Obviously, to get anywhere near the quoted official WLTP readings, uh, judicious use of the available drive modes will be needed, uh, starting with the frequent selection of the eco setting available via this button on the steering wheel. Uh, plus, ideally, you'll be regularly using the more aggressive brake regeneration options which are available to you by these steering wheel paddles here. Uh, the most extreme being I pedal. Now that slows the car down off throttle so dramatically that you'll really need to actually use the brake pedal. Activation of this car's navigation-based smart cruise control also helps here. Uh, this feature uses the navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves and straights on the highway and then automatically adjust the car's speed for more efficient driving. Uh, for maximum winter weather range, you'll be significantly aided if you've specified Hyundai's heat pump. That's available as part of the Eco Pack that you can add in to this top spec Ultimate model. The heat pump compresses refrigerant under high pressure and that creates heat that warms up the flowing air through the ventilation system. Uh, the climate setup then needs less energy from the battery in colder weather. Okay, those are the range issues we need to cover, but what about charging? Well, in future, when super rapid 350 kilowatt public roadway charges are commonplace, this car's adoption of that 800 volt vehicle architecture we mentioned earlier will really come into its own. In the unlikely event that you were to actually come across one of those ultra fast charging stations today, a 10 to 80% top up would take just 17 minutes and 16 seconds. No harm in being exact with that, with 62 miles of range for every five minutes of charging with this 73 kilowatt hour model. A year's use of the Ionity high speed charging network is included with the cost of this car, but of course, right at present, it's far more likely that you'll be using a more conventional 50 kilowatt fast charging station. Now, that requires 56 and a half minutes to charge a 73 kilowatt hour model from 10 to 80 percent. That's 17 miles for every five minutes. With the smaller battery, a uh, 58 kilowatt hour model, it'd be 46 and a half minutes for the same fill. Uh, that's just enough time if your Ionic 5 has the optional relaxation front seats fitted for you to stretch out and take 40 winks. The brand provides a Charge My Hyundai app that allows you to search for charge points by plug type, charging speed and methods of payment, and to access real-time updates on availability. Plus, the app comes with a navigation function and an intelligent route planner too to easily get you to where you need to be. Uh, you can also activate a Charge My Hyundai account for easy ongoing payment options via the app or a provided card, which gives you access to over 200,000 charges across Europe. As you'd expect, uh, the cabin central screen's EV menu can connect you through to find the nearest public charging point from an EV homepage, and that shows battery charge percentage and how far you can go with the climate system either on or off. There's also an EV setting screen to set charger limits for either AC or DC chargers. If your Ionic 5 has the V2L vehicle to load function fitted, then you can even use the two provided V2L ports, one inside and one outside the car, to charge another EV. Although because the feed is on a 3.6 kilowatt charge, uh, a typical charge in other words, it would take rather a long time. Right, back to your regular charging regime with this car via the driver's side charging port, uh, the flap for which buzzes open remotely to reveal the necessary socket, and an illuminating pixel square readout shows you the battery status. Most of the time, of course, you'll be charging at home. Now, the times required here depend, of course, on your property's power supply and the capacity of the wall box that you fit. But to give you an example, a 10.5 kilowatt wall box connected to a three-phase supply would require 10 hours and 53 minutes to charge a 73 kilowatt hour variant to 100%. It'd be eight hours and 11 minutes for the 58 kilowatt hour model. If you use a lesser 7.4 kilowatt wall box, uh, then you're looking at 11 hours, 45 minutes for the 73 kilowatt hour models, or about nine hours and 15 minutes for the 58 kilowatt hour version. 
plug into a conventional three pin domestic plug and of course replenish will take heaps longer, 30 hours and 45 minutes with the 73 kilowatt hour model and 24 hours and 40 minutes with the 58 kilowatt hour version. Remember that your home's cheap off-peak electricity allowance is likely to be for no longer than about six hours. So it'll be really important to use the EV screen's set departure times and scheduled charging and target temperature menus or to use the Charge My Hyundai app so that you can uh, charge efficiently and then not waste energy with excessive climate system use once you get underway. There's also an EV charge transfer settings menu which allows you to set a target percentage charge for your next departure. On to issues of tax, aided here as with every EV by this car's quoted zero grams per kilometre, zero emissions CO2 reading. Of course in the real world the whole zero emissions thing is fictitious uh, when you take into account the emissions impact of the power station energy generation needed to power this car its well to wheels emissions figure actually works out at 35.9 grams per kilometre. But the government believes the EV zero emissions mantra, which means that uh, there's no first year road tax to pay, uh, saving you a useful few hundred quid, and you won't even be saddled with inner city congestion charges. More significantly, your company's benefit in kind tax rating will be pitched at Group 1, which at the time of this test, uh, that meant an annual payment uh, of around £148 annually for higher rate 40% earners or from around £74 a year for lower rated earners, which is massively less, of course, than you'd pay for a similarly sized and powered combustion engine model, even an electrified one. To give you some perspective on that, uh, let's tell you that Hyundai's Tucson full hybrid SUV is BIK rated at 30% and the plug-in hybrid version is BIK rated at 11%. Service intervals are every two years or 20,000 miles, whichever comes around sooner. Uh, Hyundai offers flexible service plans to meet individual requirements and whatever package you end up opting for, it should be cheaper than what you'd pay for a combustion model and that's because all the maintenance is so much simpler. Uh, there are fewer fluids to top up and uh, thanks to the regeneration system, brake pads and discs last massively longer. It's also worth mentioning incidentally that the center screen blue link section has a vehicle diagnostics menu and that will allow you to check uh, steering, brake, camera safety system and tire status on a real-time basis. As for ownership peace of mind, well you get Hyundai's usual comprehensive five-year unlimited mileage warranty. That's far better than the rather mean three-year deal that's offered by most other EVs in this segment. Uh, it's backed up by 12 months of breakdown cover and five years of free annual vehicle health checks. Now true, rival brand Kia does claim to better this package by offering a seven-year warranty deal, but there you're limited to 100,000 miles. For this Hyundai, there's a separate eight-year, 125,000-mile warranty for the battery, although this is linked to a minimum capacity caveat, and that means that any required repairs will return the battery to at least 70% of its original capacity. You might be a bit shocked by the insurance groupings here though if you're moving over from a combustion model. Uh, insurance groupings are high with any EV and that's mainly because uh, brokers worry about the increased cost of accident repair with electric vehicles and about the possible need to replace the entire drive system battery if you were to be involved in a collision for example. A base rear driven 58 kilowatt hour Ionic 5 is rated at group 29. This rear driven uh, 73 kilowatt hour model is rated at group 34E and the top all wheel drive 73 kilowatt hour version uh, rates at group 39E. Finally, residual values should be strong. Industry experts are quoting figures of between 52 and 56 percent over a 36 month 30,000 mile ownership period, which is very class competitive. If the Ionic 5 isn't enough to position Hyundai toe to toe with the most advanced offerings from European brand automotive design, it's hard to imagine what would be. It looks arresting and it lacks nothing in terms of the latest EV technology, except perhaps for a truly Tesla style extended battery range driving figure. 
but you can bet that Hyundai is working on that. Is any brand faster at translating advanced concept to reality? What's even more impressive is that it does that without diluting extreme stylistic expression into something more palatable. That's certainly not happened here. Park an Ionic 5 in the high street and people are gonna look, invite people to join you inside and passengers are going to comment. If that isn't the feel that you're after with your new EV, then lots of other brands will better satisfy you. But if it is, this car is one you need to try. And when you do, you'll find that so much about it is different, clever, yet at the same time somehow familiar, futuristic, but in a way that manages not to be overtly odd. For someone bored with the clinicality of EVs, the Ionic 5 is certainly a breath of fresh air, especially once you step inside that futuristic cabin. Of course, this car isn't perfect. It's certainly not inexpensive, but the sticker figures merely reflect the prevailing, rather ambitious pricing you'll find applied to all this Hyundai's segment rivals. You might find some of these a bit sharper to drive, but that's because, rightly, this Korean maker has prioritized ride comfort, and for the most part, that's been achieved here. Going forward, this car will sire a whole range of EVs, not only from Hyundai, but also from its group partner marks Kia and Genesis. But its even greater importance lies with the way that it redefines what people can expect from this brand. It's a confident statement of intent.